Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Inside Out. The semester is wrapping up, so we only have three more episodes, but we are super excited to bring you some jam-packed shows. We have a great show for you. We are once again live from Hardnett Hall in the KMSU studio. Today I will be interviewing one of the football coaches. Roxanne will give you an update on the powwow. Howard has an interesting look into the Earth is Beautiful event, and as always, we'll give you sports, weather, and the news. Right, and right now a lot of... A lot of news is happening all around the Minot State area, and one of them is including in the Wellness Center. Tyler Lubin has more with the news. Uh, thank you, Roxanne and Philip. And yes, there's a lot of stuff going around around campus. Uh, let's get right into it. The Minot State Wellness Center is hosting their annual team walking challenge on Monday. If you're interested, meet at the Wellness Center to sign up for the challenge and then go on a group walk on our campus. Teams will consist of three to five people, and the daily number of minutes walked will be tracked for 12 days. After those 12 days, track your minutes and submit them. Minot State's annual Giving Day was a success this year. The, re the event raised over $250,000 in 24 hours, making it one of the most successful Giving Days in MSU history. We thank all who donated for their generosity. Visit MSU's website for a thank you from President Shirley. Minot State University and First District Health Unit will host a COVID-19 vaccination event in the Conference Center, third floor of the Student Center on April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. This opportunity is for people who need their first dose. This is also for adults over the age of 18, and the Pfizer dose is being given out. Proof of insurance and ID will make the registration process easier. However, no person wishing to be vaccinated will be turned away. There are many opportunities for students here on campus. Today we're going to look at one area in particular. Chad Olson has more on the story. Hartnett Hall is one of many buildings here on the Minot State University campus. For many students here, it is a place where they grow the most. I've learned a lot. I've learned, I've learned how to edit film or video, I guess, again. Uh, audio editing, cutting up is something I really enjoy. I learned it right here in the back cage area at the audio studio. And uh, for me, the TV show, it's helped me grow as a person. Um, kind of figure out this is where I want to be with my life and what I want to do after school, and I couldn't have done it without Hartnett Hall. There are many resources within the art and broadcasting departments to help students learn new skills. An overlooked benefit is the instructors. The teachers are here to help you and they're willing to show you the resources needed for all of your ideas to help you maximize your time here. Professor Bill Harbert says that students often work late hours. He also attests to the work ethic of students including a time when he heard loud music coming from the graphics lab while walking his dog on campus. I remember just kind of laughing to myself and saying yep labs going at midnight. I didn't go up there didn't want to know exactly what was going on but I'm sure there were some students in there just having a great time and working. Regardless of your major, taking classes at Hartnett Hall could bring many talents to light. For KMSU News, I'm... Students interested in taking classes at Hartnett Hall can reach out to their advisors or Bill Harbor by email. The Minot Symphony Orchestra is hosting its 95th season finale this Saturday, April 24th at 7.30 p.m. You can watch in person or stream the concert online via their website. Tickets must be purchased in advance, and those who attend in person will have to meet social distancing and mask requirements. And finally, the fourth annual Be the Light Might Not Walk for Autism is this Saturday at Oak Park. The goal is to raise awareness and raise money for important programs in autism awareness. The walk will begin at 10 a.m., and registration is free and can be done online. Once again, that's Tyler with the news. Thank you so much, Tyler. She is a two-time alumni from Minot State University with a bachelor's degree in science and education and a master's degree in science and management. She is planning the powwow for Minot since April of 2012. With me now is Annette Menem. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. So, for <coughs> someone who has no idea what the powwow is, what is it? A powwow is a celebration of life. It's a gathering. There are two types of powwows. There are traditional and there are contest powwows. Um, and there's dance, music, um, art, um, food, it's a gathering and it's a celebration and in our case it's an honoring. Right, so um, can you tell me a little bit more history about the powwow and what it means to you guys? Sure, well the history goes back to 1989. The Student Government Association at Minot State at that time approached the Native American students and asked them to bring the powwow to Minot State or back to Minot State. So the, the first powwow was held in the Beaver Dam which was the ballroom at that time and it was a one-day event and then eventually got moved to Swain, Old Swain in the basement um, or in the gym and eventually it ended up at the dome in the 90s later in the 90s at a two-day a two event and the reason it's so important is because in Indian country we like to honor someone who has accomplished something and walking across a graduation stage is an honor. Right so just for the Minot area and uh, the powwow 
what does it mean to the students that help out and are in this like Native American culture club? The, actually, you know, uh, that, I'm glad you asked that question because in, when I look back at the history, the powwow created the Native American club, which is the longest standing club on campus. And so what that means, if you think about that, that's something to keep these students together as a club because it's something that people, the community, the state, and Indian country relies on us to celebrate at this time of the year. Right, so when and where is this event this year? It is April 30th and May 1st, starting at 7 p.m. in the Minot State Dome um, here in Minot. Everyone is welcome, free and open to the public. Right, and so when looking on your website, so due to COVID, the powwow is a little bit different this year. Uh, what will be changing in the response to COVID? There are going to be masks required in the buildings distance and we are asking people to stay in their family pods and that's kind of a natural thing for powwows is for people to come as a family in a group. So with, with, the, with the website is COVID aware and requirements is what we are using during the powwow and the event. Awesome. So from the website, as you said, it's completely free, but there will be things that people and students can be spending. What can they be looking out for? Um, we have approximately 16 vendors coming in from all over the nation and there will be um, things, they will be selling everything from authentic Native uh, American artwork um, and jewelry to um, fashion things to everyday trinkets. It's, it's a vendor show in itself, <laughs> that part of it. That's so awesome. So for people that don't know even about the club mm -hmm. and um, the community that surrounds itself, like what do they need to know and how could they join? Um, anybody's welcome for the Native American Club on campus. We don't discriminate. Um, and so the Native American Club is located in the Native American Center, which is on the third floor of the Student Center, right upstairs from the Beaver Dam. If you're interested, just stop in. Today I had a couple students in there. They were waiting to take pictures um, next door, and they stopped in and just to say hello and hung out for a little bit. That's so awesome. It looks like there's such like a tight knit community and I love that. Um, you also have a little bit of these flyers. I want the camera to zoom in just a little bit on yeah. there to see everything that's happening all mm -hmm. around uh, the Minot Dome that day. So just a really interesting thing. Is there anything more that the audience needs to know about before signing off? Um, just go to the website. You can find all the information on the website and we have a Facebook page event as well. Great. Fantastic. So we are all out of time. But thank you so much for stopping in today. Um, make sure everyone check out the powwow on April 30th and May 1st. Um, so we're going to go to Troy with the weather outside. Hey, yeah, we're outside here, Hartnell Hall. Beautiful day. A little windy right now here in Minot, but we're going to have the weather when we come back. So you're going to catch me outside. How about that after a break from our underwriters? Thank you to all of our underwriters. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Beyonce, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB, 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, Minot's Music Mix. Yeah. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. Hey, East End, where the poor is worth so much more, located in downtown Minot. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. MSU Beavers Hockey, online info at msubeavers.com. Forward Communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. 
Minot Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. HBARB Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bear's Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Monument State Campus. Thank you so much to all of our underwriters. We really could not do it without you guys. It has been very nice today here in Minot, so we get to have Troy outside and give you the weather. Troy, how's it looking out there? It's beautiful out here right now, uh, sunny, a little warm. The wind just died down. It's awesome. And we're going to start by taking a look what's happening in your neck of the woods. Currently in Minot, it's 64 degrees. The high today was 66, the low was 27. It's sunny. Nice little change up after some snow yesterday. Moving ahead to the seven-day forecast. Tomorrow will be 43, partly cloudy, partly sunny, the low of 22. As you move to Saturday, it will be 54 with a low of 35, partly cloudy, partly sunny once again. And expect some rain to close out your weekend there Sunday, 45 the high, 34 the low. Monday will kick off with some rain early in the morning. The high will be 55 that day, the low of 34. It will warm up Tuesday to 65, partly cloudy, partly sunny with a low of 33. 61 on Wednesday, it will be partly cloudy once again, a little bit of sun there. 38 will be the low. And then next Thursday when we're back here for weather, it will be 7 degrees outside. We might be outside again. Currently around the state of North Dakota, it's 64 here in Minot, like we said. Out east in Grand Fork, 64 as well in Fargo, it's 64. Down in the capital, Bismarck, it's 61. And in Dickinson, it's also 61. Williston is 63. If you take a look at gravel, South Dakota, Auburn, South Dakota, sorry, it will be the host of the Minot State track and field event this weekend after the Drake Relays. 52 on Friday, 24 the low. 51 Saturday, the low of 31 on Saturday. And a high of 52 when they are traveling back to Minot. As we take a look at, we're going to take a look at Tasmanian, Tasmania, sorry, Australia. Uh, didn't really have anyone's hometown spotlight, so we're going to take a look at that beautiful there on the island of Tasmania. It's currently 51 and cloudy. The high today will be 57. The low will be 48. That's a weather day. And we're going to toss it back inside of Philip Green, who's got a great interview with Coach Danny Friend. Thank you, Troy, for that update on how beautiful it is outside. We have a very special guest for you guys today. He has caught a touchdown against the Ohio State University when he was playing football at Indiana. Joining me now is the new offensive line coach from the Minot State Beavers, Danny Friend. Thank you, Coach, for being here. I appreciate you guys having me. So before you came to the Beavers, you were a GA at Indiana University. How was your time there? You know, it was a pretty unique experience for me. I played there as an undergrad. Uh, my first year was in 2013. Um, finished my playing up in 2017. Uh, played tight end and offensive line there and then went right from playing and do uh, being a graduate assistant. Um, worked with the scout defensive line, you know, got to work with some great coaches, um, you know, win a lot of football games, get to coach at some great stadiums. And, you know, we le I think we left that place better than when I got there as a player. You are now obviously the new coach here at Minot State. Why did you choose to come to Minot State? You know, this is my first opportunity to be a real position coach outside of being a graduate assistant. Um, uh, one of the coaches I worked with previously at Indiana, um, worked with Coach Aldridge at a previous job, so they had a connection, and I got in touch with him and the offensive coordinator here, Coach Ed Holm, and um, met with both of them and just, you know, had a great talk and thought this would be a great opportunity for me moving forward. You've been here since pr the beginning of the semester. Yeah. How, do you, how do you feel about Minot State so far? So it, super welcoming. The people here have been great. Uh, like you said, been, been here uh, so it's the middle of February. Um, got got a, you know, a house rented now. Um, university's been great. Um, I got to meet the president and the AD. They've been awesome. Um, players have been great as well. The offensive line has really brought me in, and they've done a great job of making me feel welcome. Have you been able to experience any of the areas outside of just the campus in Minot? So just, I like to eat. So as, you know, as an offensive line coach, I like to get out there and try food. Um, you know, Starving Rooster has been awesome. Been there a bunch. Uh, Kroll's, the diner's been probably my favorite breakfast spot. I think I've gone there five or six times already. Um, so love places to eat. That's awesome. As an offensive line coach, what are your goals and what do you hope to bring to the unit? So number one is toughness. I mean, you gotta be up, go, gotta be out there and move people against their will as an offensive lineman. So you gotta get out there and you gotta attack. Um, you gotta be tough, be strong, be physical. That's what I want my offensive lineman to be. Um, and then you gotta protect, protect, protect the quarterback, protect the running back. It's our job to make sure that everybody's uh, doing their job. Obviously, the Beavers won't be playing any games this spring, but as we prepare for the fall, what are, what are your goals for the t offense in the fall? So I think as an offense, uh, we just need to come together as a unit. You know, if we got each other's back and we all do our jobs and, you know, to a man, we go out there and uh, take care of our responsibilities, I think, you know, we can go out there and we can win a lot of games. The, the spring season's wrapping up. 
by the end of the next week. How have you described your time in the spring season so far? Uh, it's been great seeing the guys develop. Um, just from being here and not knowing anybody um, to now, you know, I'm, um, I feel like I've been here already for a couple years just with the O-line group. They've been great. They've let me in um, and done a great job of just making me feel comfortable and just seeing how they've grown already since I've been here. Um, it's really just <clears throat> buying into the concepts I'm teaching them and um, I'm excited, you know, to get get them going in the summer and then back for fall camp. So the, this Saturday, the Beavers will play a little inner squad scrimmage, and then hopefully on next Wednesday, we'll play Mayville in a scrimmage. What what can fans who come out and watch that expect from the your offensive line unit? Uh, they're gonna uh, they're gonna expect they can see toughness. You know, they can see guys playing hard. Um, the stuff that we talked about earlier. Um, we want to be able to do do more than just talk about it. We want people to show up and say that the offensive line plays hard, plays tough, and plays physical. That's awesome. So going back to your time at Indiana, you obviously, as you mentioned, you played tight end, tight end and offensive line. Can you describe the transition from tight end to O-line? Yep. So I, I was brought in as a tight end uh, for my first couple years, played four years there at that position. And then after my fourth year, I had some injuries and some off-season surgeries. Um, wasn't moving around quite as well as I was not was never fleet as foot, but, you know, put on a little bit of weight after the surgery. And uh, we were thin at offensive line. And uh, my head coach at the time, Coach Allen, came and asked me if I'd be willing to make the switch. And, um, you know, just wanted to help the team any way I could and decided to do that in fall camp and put on about 40 pounds in four weeks. And uh, like I said, I like to eat. And, uh, you know, just made the switch. And uh, here I am. Wouldn't be sitting right here if I wouldn't have done that. So happened for a reason. We're going to make a quick transition real quick. Outside of football, you um, are doing some things with the football guys, the North Dakota Miss Amazing. For yep. those who aren't aware, what is that event? So it's an event for um, this group of individuals that, you know, um, might not get to experience a normal prom or high school situation. So we're hopefully going to get a group of about 16 gentlemen to take these young ladies out, you know, get all dressed up, have a great time, um, have a prom walk, have a little dance off. And it's a great opportunity to get you guys around some people and and you know serve the community that's awesome well unfortunately we are out of time again that is coach danny friend the new offensive line coach for the beavers make sure to come out and support and watch them this saturday when they do their little inter, inter squad scrimmage don't go anywhere we're going to go to a quick short underwriters break but when we're back we will have cole with the sports and howard will give you an update on the earth is beautiful event Thank you again to all of our underwriters for keeping the lights on. Well, today is Earth Day for those of you who weren't aware. Howard has more with the Earth is Beautiful event. Dude, today I put this in my mouth and that happened. And it is known as National Earth Day all around the world. Today I'm here with Professor Dan Kahn. He's an associate professor of teacher and education, but he has a deep and sincere love for gardening and plants. Now, Dan, you work with the Red and Green School. Can you tell me what is that all about? Yeah, it's a uh, nonprofit organization that I started with some graduate students. We went uh, to a conference in Denver, Colorado and learned about ecological education and felt inspired to promote ecological education here in Minot. And last year we started with our first project as a community garden. And this is our second year of, of having a community garden and we hope to uh, provide experiences for students, faculty, staff on Minot and the broader community. 
Nice, and you did mention how this is a new and up and coming program. So is there anything that's up and coming, say that this is Earth Day, is there anything up and coming that folks can get involved with? Absolutely. So next Friday, um, the 30th of April at 12 noon, we're going to have an event. We call it Aki Onishishin, which means the earth is beautiful in Ojibwe. And uh, we're going to have a garden gathering in which we will have Ojibwe uh, speakers and music and also Mandan, Hadatsa, and Arikara, also known as MHA Nation speakers and music. Those are nations that have lived in this area and we want to uh, honor them first and foremost. And then we also use their gardening practices last summer and will continue to do so this summer. Uh, that's right before the MSU powwow. So um, if you can make it out, we're going to have delicious food. We've been working with Annette Menem for from the Native American Cultural Center here on campus. We're gonna have uh, coffee, tea, delicious food, uh, games for kids. If, if anybody wants to bring kids, they're certainly welcome. Uh, it'll be about an hour, and then it's before the, the powwow. So it should be a great time. Hopefully everyone can make it. It's open to the public, just across the street from uh, Model Hall on University Avenue. Awesome. Now, is there anything that someone really interested in this event can do in preparation for the event? Sure. Uh, you know, tomorrow, uh, Friday, we're going to build a stage. We uh, read this book called The Buffalo Bird Woman's Garden, and she builds a stage above the garden to oh. sing music to the, the garden, to watch over the garden. So we're going to build this stage for our event and for other things. So that's going to happen at 1 o'clock tomorrow. We could certainly use volunteers. And then we're going to start laying some dirt tomorrow at 2. And so if anybody wants to garden, we could certainly use help with that as well. Uh, tomorrow at 2 across from Model Hall, and University Avenue. Nice, great stuff. Now you did mention you do something else outside of the Red and Green School. Do you want to touch on that subject? Sure. So uh, later that day, I'm also releasing a book that I co-authored with uh, some friends called Unraveling the Assessment Industrial Complex, How Testing Perpetuates Inequalities in America. And then I also have a podcast called Ed Heads. Okay. Awesome, awesome stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Daniel Kahn. He's working with the Red and Green School to promote gardening and plants. Happy Earth Day and see you next week across the street from Model Hall, April 30th. <laughs> Thank you so much, Howard, for the update of the Earth is Beautiful event. Well, here in Minot, we hosted the ACHA National Women's Hockey Tournament. Unfortunately, the Beavers didn't win, but Cole, give us an update on how that tournament went. Yeah, it is not a good week, uh, obviously, as the bo both teams lost, a tough finish, but... Uh, you know, they'll be back next year. And uh, hello, Beaver fans. I'm Cole Clementich back again this week reporting for KMSU Sports. Like I said, it's a tough week to be a fan of Beaver hockey. The United States men's team loses to Adrian College in the national championship. 6-1 to one is the final score. Make no mistake, your Beavers had a great season nonetheless. To make it back to the title game after winning it all and COVID throwing a wrench into last season, it's definitely not easy. The women's team was just short this year by a 3-0 score. The Lindenwood Lions advanced to the championship game over the Beavers. Once again, another phenomenal season for the Lady Beavers is looking like a bright future, and both teams will be good for years to come. Hockey season in Minot is not quite done yet, however. Be sure to check out the Minotauros in action tonight at the Mesa when they drop the puck versus the Aberdeen Wings. Minot State Athletics has a new addition to the department with a new bench boss, our own Philip Green has more. Basketball season has come and gone. Minot State's women basketball team is still hard at work. They have already begun preparing for next season with a new leader at home. Minot State Athletics just hired new head coach Mike Brandt. Well, I've, I've been out of coaching for uh, about a year and a half, two years, and I'm just really eager to get back into it. Um, saw this team open. I know the conference is really tough, and so I did some researching on the university and also the conference a little bit and just thought it might be a good situation to get in and uh, turns out it worked out we both have a pretty good fit for each other so I'm excited about it. Coach Brandt had been away from basketball for several years. It was very tough on him to watch the game he loved from the sideline. When he finally got the call that he was going to be taking over for the Beavers there was a sense of relief. Yeah well it was uh, you know it was excitement definitely had some excitement and also some relief because you know I've been trying to get back in it and uh, the first year I was out of it was so-so, was but the second year was really tough watching a lot of games, you know, and thinking, you know, what are they doing? Why aren't those coaches doing that and this? And so uh, it was really uh, some relief to kind of get a, another head job uh, and get back into the game and the women's basketball. I love it. I love to be part of a team. I love to have the relationship. So I'm uh, very excited and, you know, thrilled to be here.
challenges Coach Brandt has brought to the team. So far, Coach Brandt has been really helpful in coaching aspects. He's doing the Minus State Athletic Department is very fortunate to have Coach on hand, and they ho they're hoping also for some results for the Minus State women's basketball team. That is all we have it for this week on KMSC Sports. I am Cole Clementich signing off, and as always, roll beeves. Roxanne, you pitched yesterday, a closing effort, uh, beat Northern State 6-3. to three. You know, How are you feeling right now? Um, I just love that I was able to do that for my team. You know, I came in during the second inning. Um, the first pitcher, our defense just wasn't as hot as we needed it to be, so I was able to come in, slow the batters down, and hold them down for the rest of the innings. Um, so happy my bats were able to get some runs in, made a pitcher, pitcher more comfortable in that position as well. So I was really happy I could do that. And we have games uh, this weekend too, so I really hope that we could get some wins as well just for the, the team and making sure that we get that post-conference tournament. Uh, we want to uh, mention the technical difficulties we had with the package story on Coach Brandt. We apologize for that, but we are super excited for what he and the women's basketball team are going to do in the upcoming winter. Right. Nonetheless, we really had a good show. We had Tyler Lubin with the news about the chalk walk. We had an interview from Philip with one of his football coaches. I interviewed Annette Menham for the powwow coming up soon. And when we had Troy with the good weather. And Howard had an interview about the Earth is Beautiful event happening. And Cole also had a really good uh, sports segment as well. Well, this is the end of our show. Reminder, we only have two episodes left remaining in the semester. Next week, we have a special episode for you guys. We will bring in a couple of high school students who are interested in broadcasting radio and some of the things we do here in the communications department. So come to that episode. It's going to be super interesting to watch. We're really looking forward to it. Thanks again for tuning in. We will see you guys next week.